at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Thousands of Bear County voters made their presence known at the polls for Super Tuesday, but there were some hiccups in the process. We'll have the latest results for you. We have storms moving into our area as we speak. Our Justin Horn is standing by with details. Good morning. It is Wednesday, March 3rd. A couple of big stories this March morning. March the 4th. Is it March the 4th? Yes, it's March the 4th. March the 4th. It's all right. Here's Wednesday. Stay I got the Wednesday part right. Well, you stayed up too late last night. I know. I was watching the election results. Well, so we you got and that a lot story. of people who were trying to watch yeah. the election results, but there were problems with the yeah. election results. But it's okay. It's all fixed now, and we're going to have a live report on that coming up in a minute. And also, we've got a line of thunderstorms headed our way. It's like on the doorstep. Yeah. How bad's it going to be, Justin? Well, we are seeing some severe weather with this, so uh, I want to caution you there. We think these storms will weaken a little bit as they work towards San Antonio, but we have to keep our guard up here because these storms are getting pretty close, and this could affect the morning rush hour. Here is the line of storms that we're watching. You can see basically stretches across our entire viewing area, but it's this segment right here that we want to watch very closely. That's where we're seeing some of the strongest storms. Severe thunderstorm warning that goes until 445 this morning. does include Bandera, Kerr, Medina, and Uvalde counties. It's possible that this warning could get extended. Uh, off to the east as this line of storms moves east. Look at all the lightning with this. So Kerrville, you're really getting hit hard right now. Probably some gusty winds in there too. Winds up to 60 miles per hour there around Kerrville. There could be some small hail. And then I would imagine there's a little bit of small hail there in uh, parts of northwestern Medina County as that uh, segment of the line moves through. A little further south, Sabinal and along Highway 90, that uh, that heavy rain is starting to move in your direction. Uh, we plotted it out here, says San Antonio about 6 o'clock. I think it could be a little bit earlier than that. We're talking probably 5.30 to 6 this morning that this line is moving in. So if you want to get an early start on the commute, I suppose uh, you could do it now. But uh, keep in mind, there's probably going to be some heavy rain in spots as this line moves in. There's a look at some of the 24 hour rainfall totals. Pretty impressive, up to two inches in some spots there across Edwards County. Also want to point out we have a severe thunderstorm watch that goes until 8 a.m. this morning, basically west of San Antonio, so the hill country. A lot of these storms actually starting to move out of this area, but there's still that potential for some stronger weather. Uh, forecast for today, uh, it stays fairly cool. It, you'll also notice that it will get breezy once this line of storms passes by. We'll get some gusty winds. Still could see a few showers on the backside of this storm system. That's one little change we've added to the forecast. But we're going to continue to track this line. Again, it could have an issue, could cause some issues for the morning commute. Marcus, uh, what are things looking like right now? Well, we uh, should be in the clear right now. However, although we have no accidents uh, at this time on the highways, there is a reason for caution if you're headed out. Now, although Justin, Justin just showed you the map, how far out those big storms are, Take a look at Broadway at 410. Already seeing moisture on the lens there. So if there's moisture on the lens there, there's drops. You can bet that over by the airport, uh, the 281 410 connector ramps and other connector ramps throughout the city are going to be damp, and that means they will already be slick. So remember, reduce that speed, increase that following distance. Highway 98 couples, no sign of it there just yet. But once again, 410 Broadway area, we're seeing it. So 281 by Winding Way, north and southbound lanes. Use caution. Remember, reduce that speed this morning. David and Leslie. Hey, Officer Trujillo, once again, there was a glitch in the vote counting system here in Bear County last night. The numbers did not come in until 2.30 this morning. Just a couple of hours ago, we finally got those final numbers, but they are in. We're going to show you some of the results. We'll get to Sarah Costa on exactly what happened with that glitch. It was a big night for the Democratic presidential nomination of, obviously, Texas holds the third most delegates in the country behind California and New York. Over the last three days, three of the candidates ended their campaigns, as you know. That leaves Joe Biden, Mike Bloomberg, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Tulsi Gabbard in the race for the nomination. So let's take a look at the results. Here you go. Uh, statewide, Joe Biden wins big with 34 percent, Bernie Sanders at 30 percent, Michael Bloomberg with 15, and Elizabeth Warren with 12. And uh, there are a lot of candidates on the GOP side, well, let's look Bear County first for the uh, Democratic we nomination. We can punch that back up. Yeah, yes, yeah. Why Biden won statewide. Bernie Sanders Bernie was Sanders, the big winner in the county. 33% to 29%. And then Bloomberg actually finished ahead of Elizabeth Warren here in Bear County. As we mentioned, a lot of attention over the past several weeks has been focused on the Democratic race for president. But there were several Republicans who were trying to challenge Donald Trump for the Dem for the Republican nomination and we're well, not very no successful. Yeah. yeah, Trump with 94% of the Republican side vote, 4% um, 
on the, se the second person, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> whoever it was. I mean, there so. was like five or six who were on there, and they only received 4% collectively. Yeah. All right, uh, County Sheriff, here's a looky look for that. Javier Salazar decisively wins with 54%. And some other uh, numbers we want to show you this morning. What else do we have for you? Uh, let's go, let's talk or, about the glitch. Let's talk about the glitch. Sarah that Kosas, was the big thing. Yeah, Sarah Kosas, what, once again, we didn't get numbers till 2.30 this morning. So if you're just waking we'll up, numbers, we so. have the numbers for you, but let's find out what happened. Uh, Sarah, what happened? Well, that's exactly what they are trying to figure out, David and Leslie, exactly what went wrong. To get numbers that late in the night, several hours after the polls close at 7 p.m. is definitely not normal and the, like we said the polls close at 7 p.m. and a couple hours after those numbers are usually in but last night the Bear County Elections Office says they had some software issues throughout the evening which held up posting of the cumulative voting numbers which include election day voting numbers early voting numbers and absence absentee voting the Bear County Elections Administrator Jackie Callallen says there were 280 vote centers located throughout the county, and because voters could cast their ballot at any center, it changed the dynamic of the voting process and reporting of results as well. The software company for the new system had representatives at the elections office all night trying to remedy the issues, but there was no exact answer from them exactly what went wrong. If they have, they have not shared. No, we're not. <laughs> we will find out. We, we're we definitely owed an explanation. Yeah. Absolutely. Kellanen went on to say that she is very pleased with voter turnout, calling it extraordinary. The final numbers were 122,159 early voters, 139,421 with absentee ballots, and the total number of votes cast in Bear County, 253,071 votes. Now, the elections office says they will be looking into exactly what went wrong in the tallying of the numbers in the software system in the next few weeks so they can better prepare for the upcoming May elections. Live from the elections office, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. David and Leslie. Race for Bear County Sheriff. Voters in the Democratic primary voting for Sheriff Javier Salazar. Tim Gerber is following the story. He has a recap from all sides. Despite all the problems he's faced in his first term as sheriff, Democratic voters in this primary overwhelmingly giving their votes to Sheriff Javier Salazar, helping him avoid a runoff and now allowing him to focus all of his efforts on winning in November. Salazar addressing his supporters last night. The sheriff has had a difficult first term leading BCSO, highlighted by numerous arrests of his deputies and jailers, escapes and mistaken releases of inmates and inmate suicides, including the one that happened yesterday. Salazar says many of the issues he's faced are problems that have existed at the agency for decades. He says he needs more time to make more reforms. Part of the issue, as I see it at the sheriff's office, has been a little instability over the last several sheriffs. It's been a, a string of, stream of, of one-turn sheriffs, and so I'm I'm hoping to stick around a little while. Some of the plans that I have, and they're great plans, are going to take some time to implement. Over on the Republican side, it looks like Jerry Rickoff, the former longtime Bear County clerk, will be the man to beat for Salazar in November. Despite having no experience in law enforcement, he is the leader on the Republican side. He didn't even have a watch party last night. We caught up to him at home, and this is what he had to say. I represent a change in thinking. I plan on developing unique programs to address these issues by using science and technology to observe, measure, and test, and look for observable points that need continuous improvement. And that's where we'll focus to solve the problems at the jail and in how we police the public here in Bear County. Should Rickoff not be able to hold on to that lead and slip below 50 percent, he would be in a runoff then most likely with former chief criminal investigator for the district attorney's office, Willie Ng. He has a ton of law enforcement experience and he's running as a reformer, hoping to fix the problems at BCSO. Now we did everything that we could, everything. My whole team, we, we worked really hard. We got out in the community. We did everything. We did the digital, we did the mail, we did the, with the uh, phone banking, we did uh, text messaging. We did everything. So I'm very proud of the team and win, uh, win or lose, we did a great, we did a lot of great work. 
With the Sheriff Salazar campaign, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Nationwide, former Vice President Joe Biden had a very big night with Super Tuesday victories in states all across the South. Now, the stakes could not be higher as the Democratic, the Democratic contest for president is poised to become a two-man race likely to drag on for weeks. Here's ABC's Inez de la Cuatera. Overnight, Joe Biden making a remarkable comeback. They don't call Super Tuesday for nothing. With some states still too close to call, the former vice president sweeping the South, winning at least nine states on Super Tuesday. I think um, Joe has the track record of unification among, across the aisle. And I think that's really key right now. After a series of early losses, Biden getting a last-minute surge from his landslide victory in South Carolina and from Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, who endorsed him after they dropped out. We were told, well, when he got to Super Tuesday, it'd be over. Well, it may be over for the other guy. But it's still far from over for that other guy. Bernie Sanders went into this as the front runner and racked up big numbers in California, Colorado, Utah, and Vermont. Voters came out in droves, some in Texas waiting more than three hours to vote, Utah breaking records, and in Virginia, turnout was almost double what it was in 2016. Super Tuesday was also the first time Mike Bloomberg was on the ballot, and while he did get his first delegates, the former mayor or failed to win any states. And the same goes for Elizabeth Warren. Both are now facing calls to drop out. I know we can do it. And you know who else knows it? Donald Trump. Bloomberg and Warren are both looking past Super Tuesday. They spent the night campaigning in states that will be holding some of the next big voting contests in a week. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. We know there were long lines opening here in San Antonio and all over the state of Texas. Some of the lines were open for 16 hours in California. In California. That's you know how what? long I, people waited. I love that. It means people are what? actually getting out and voting. Well, we had 53,000 here in Bear County. That's terrific. In I a love primary. That. I know. It's good stuff. 442 now and 68 degrees outside. Another day, another risky internet challenge. We'll tell you what you need to know about the Skull Breaker Challenge. And it's as dangerous as it sounds. And next, the San Antonio Spurs didn't start off so well against uh, Charlotte, but acting coach Tim Duncan was able to push his team forward and get a win. We have highlights coming up. And as we mentioned, Justin Horn is standing by in the Weather Center. He's got some storms headed our way. He'll have those for you in just a second. Hey, we've got a weather update for you real quick before we get those Spurs highlights. A severe thunderstorm warning has now been extended into Bear County until 530. Justin Horn standing by in the Weather Center. He's going to have an update for us in just a second, and we'll take a look at that thunderstorm headed our way. In the meantime, Tim Duncan stepped in as acting head coach last night as the Spurs took on Charlotte. Greg Popovich out due to personal business. Give Tim marks for excellence. The Spurs three game road trip didn't start off too well. Spurs Fell the Hornets sting. Charlotte got out to a 16-2 lead early, but later on, DeJounte Murray came through big time. He led all scores with 21 points, helped the Spurs get a big win. He got that bucket with 2.12 to play. The Spurs hang on for the one-point victory, 104-103. Tim Duncan now 1-0 as a Spurs head coach. Next up, the Spurs move on to Brooklyn, where they will face the Nets. That game starts at 6.30 on Friday. Go, Spurs, go. I know you like that. That's, see, look at that smile on her face today. Proud of them. Yep, I'm good. Still ahead this half hour, the Internet world has yet another ridiculous challenge you need to be aware of. We'll tell you what you need to know and a look at that weather coming up. Welcome back, everyone. As we continue monitoring the roadways uh, so far, things should be pretty good as far as 
accidents are concerned. We have no reports of any accidents on the highways. However, take a look. This is I-10-604, and as you can see, that rain uh, starting to come down there on that far, far northwest side. So that's 1604 at I-10. So be advised, those cloverleaf connector ramps, those are going to be a little bit uh, slick this morning. You want to give it some extra time, reduce that speed, increase that following distance, and please put away those distractions. No cell phones or coffee cups this morning. Both hands on the wheel. Other areas like the downtown area, not too bad. 35 at uh, Brooklyn, also 35 here in the uh, 35 for the upper and lower level split. 410 Exchange Parkway, not too bad, but here's the northeast side, 35 up there, 604, also seeing droplets on the lens. Justin? Thank you, Marcus. And those are some showers out ahead of this line. Now, we do want to pass along, as you just heard, we have extended this severe thunderstorm warning now. The National Weather Service has. It includes Bear County, so northwestern Bear County. Now within this warning, this is going to go until 530 this morning, and this is out ahead of this line, which has been fairly powerful this morning. The, the one thing we're watching here is the wind, some gusty winds with this, up to 60 miles per hour, in fact, as this line moves in. And it is picking up steam. So it's going to be here in San Antonio, I think, within the hour, and we'll start to see some of the effects here. Some of the strongest part of the storm is just south of Bandera, just closing in on Medina Lake. So notice a little sort of bowing right there. We could see some pretty strong winds uh, as it moves over Medina Lake. And there are some of the counties included in this warning, Bandera, Bear, Kindle, and Medina counties. The storm is through Kerrville, but uh, you're still getting a lot of lightning, some light rain still on the backside of this, too. So there could be a little bit of street flooding going on in Kerrville. The rain came down very, very heavy. This is a little closer look at that uh, stronger area of this line just south of Bandera, uh, maybe moving towards Pipe Creek here uh, very soon. Uh, you're going to see the effects. This line does extend south towards Hondo. A little weaker, though, further south you go. And this may be the part of the storm that moves into most of San Antonio. So we may luck out here on the severe weather. Also means we're not going to get as much rain as some of the areas have uh, this morning. Uh, but we'll continue to track that line as it gets a little bit closer to town. Hail Tracker, it's that same little area we were watching. This is where there could be some small hail in there. And it's uh, just right on the Medina Bandera County line where we're picking up on some possible hail with this storm as well. Let's zoom out and show you the tracker. This, this puts it into San Antonio a little after 630. Again, I think it could be earlier than that. It looks like this isn't timing it out very well because the storm line is moving uh, at a pretty quick clip. Uh, let's talk about rainfall real quick, too, because we've seen some good rain out of it up to two inches in some cases, especially up here in Edwards County. That's where the storm sort of began and you had a little more coverage up there. So the rainfall totals are a little bit higher. Numbers are going to come down some and I don't think we're going to have a whole lot, whole lot of issues with flooding here in town, but the rain will come down quickly once it arrives. Severe thunderstorm watch in effect until 8 a.m. They have extended this east, so it includes Bear County. But once this line passes by, the severe threat is out of here. And we're just dealing with uh, some gusty winds on the back side of this uh, storm system. So the future cast shows the storms through here by 10 o'clock. But what I do want to point out is we still may have some showers up here across the hill country through the afternoon. And some of those could even leak down as far south as San Antonio. So we're going to keep some rain chances in there. A few clouds too. Further south you go, the warmer and more sun you'll see today. Uh, but where you're in the clouds and that, where we have that chance of rain today, it will be a little bit cooler. We're thinking low 70s here in San Antonio, so that good chance of rain early. Uh, again, we have that severe thunderstorm warning that goes until 530 this morning. So uh, keep that in mind if you're planning out your morning commute. And from there, we get some better weather Thursday into Friday. Some more rain chances by Sunday. We'll be right back. In this morning's GMA First Look, Parenting Alert. Videos like this one may only be a few seconds, but the frightening aftermath can last much longer. My son ended up having a seizure with a traumatic brain injury and a concussion with loss of consciousness. The Skull Breaker Challenge is as dangerous as it sounds. Two people fool an unsuspecting third into jumping into the air, kicking their feet right out from under them, all captured on video and shared on TikTok. After falling victim to the challenge, Stacy and Mark Shanker's son was rushed to the hospital. Now the two students who challenged the boy are facing assault charges. So how should you talk to your kids about these types of viral challenges? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Yeah, I don't <laughs> understand. We've been talking about this for a few weeks now. I just don't understand how people do that. Hey, by the way, just real quick, we're going to continue to give you election results throughout the, the Good Morning San Antonio show. 
but we also have them at the bottom of your screen because we can't cover every single race and you can also go to our website to get the results. Yeah, I know a lot of you just waking up and you probably went to bed without knowing the results. They didn't come in until about 2.20. At least Bear County. Of result, yeah. Bear County because of a glitch in the system. So we'll tell you about that glitch and we'll have all those final numbers for you across the screen and later on throughout the newscast all morning. Your time now is 457, 67 degrees. Still ahead, we have more coverage of Super Tuesday, including problems with the results coming out of Bear County, as we mentioned. And Twitter telling its employees to work from home amid the coronavirus fears. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, Super Tuesday now over. We are going to tell you who won and who didn't. Plus, there was a glitch in the Bear County voting system. We've got the details on that. Live Cam giving us a look outside. You can see by the droplets, we have uh, rain in the area, but not just rain. Bear County is under a severe thunderstorm. It's a watch or a warning. Warning. So we're going to get details on that coming up. And good morning. It is Wednesday. It is March 4th. We'll get to more on the election results in just a moment. But of course, the big story right now is weather. Yeah, and that warning is for northwestern Bear County. Let me clarify that, and it goes till 5:30 this morning. So it's uh, this area here, but it's this line of storms which will eventually affect the entire city that we're watching. It has had a history of producing some severe weather, and uh, we're still seeing some pretty gusty winds with this, especially in these areas. We see uh, quite a bit of lightning there around Bandera County, and then up towards parts of uh, Kendall and Gillespie County. A lot of lightning strikes here, so these storms are very electrical. And again, this goes until 5:30 this morning. It includes Bandera, Bear, Kendall, and Medina counties. So let's zoom in closer here and show you this storm just south of Fredericksburg. Nice cluster of lightning strikes here. And the way it's bowing out just a little bit, we're going to get some pretty good winds with this, perhaps some gusts up to 60 miles per hour. That's a possibility as it moves towards Sisterdale. Comfort, you're getting the very heavy rain right now. And uh, likely there's going to be a little bit of street flooding. The good news is this line is moving quickly. So flooding has not been much of an issue. Pipe Creek, very heavy rain falling where you are. A lot of lightning strikes and there could be a little bit of hail. See that purple color there uh, mixed in with the radar. I think that's probably where we could get some small hail, maybe some uh, up to penny size hail possible. And then the line extends further south. Uh, Hondo, you're getting some rain, although the tail end of this line tends to be a little bit weaker. And that may be what we feel here in San Antonio. We may miss the brunt of this severe weather, which is good news, but it will make the morning commute a little bit messy. I still think we'll get rain out of it. We mentioned the hail. Uh, it does look like we still have a little bit of hail there just around Medina Lake, picking up on our hail tracker. This is probably small, uh, maybe up to pea size uh, with this line. And then we've tracked this out for you. Uh, Bernie, about 537. So here within the next 20 to 30 minutes, you're going to feel some of the stronger storms. And this is an area here that will get uh, some of those gustier winds and again, maybe some small hail. We talked about the rain a little bit, up to two inches in some cases as you get out in the hill country, but not that much as this moves towards uh, San Antonio. Severe thunderstorm watch in effect till 8 o'clock this morning. That does include Bear County. That's been extended a little further east, and uh, we'll get some rain chances mixed in there. We're going to talk more about this forecast. There's some more rain chances later today, but we want to get over to traffic and talk to Marcus and see how things are going on the roads. Marcus. It's coming, just like we can see that rain coming. I know the flood of accidents is just on its way. Thankfully, right now, no accidents. So in that department, we're still looking pretty good. However, we are starting to see some of the uh, early rain uh, hit the streets there. Highway 90 from 1604 all the way in through Couples. We're seeing damp roads. Also, Twitty and Winding Way uh, starting to see a little sheen to the roadway. So, folks, the rule of thumb is going to be give it an extra 10 to 15 minutes this morning, reduce that speed, increase that following distance, and put away those distractions throughout your morning commute. David and Leslie. Okay, thank you very much. As we mentioned earlier, there was a glitch in Bear County in getting the election results, but we got them, and we'll have details yeah. on the glitch from Sarah coming up in a minute. Yeah, the details came in, and all the numbers came in about 2.30 this morning. So if you're just waking up, you went to bed last night, you wonder who won. Well, let's talk a little bit about the presidential nomination on the Democratic side. A lot of candidates coming to Texas. Spent a lot of time here and a lot of money here. Joe Biden, the surprise winner in Texas, For the state of Texas, but For the you, whole state. If yeah. you look at Bear County, it's kind of a different story. Take a look. Bernie Sanders, 33 percent and, and Biden with 29 percent. So he took the county, but uh, Biden wins the state. Michael Bloomberg spent a lot of money here in Bear County, and he ends up with 15 percent of the vote. That's the threshold to get some delegates. And of course, 
Elizabeth Warren came in fourth with 12 percent, so she won't get any delegates from the state of Texas. No, she won't. And and the Republican side, of course, there were some challengers to President Trump, but they didn't amount to much because statewide, 94 percent went with the current president, Donald Trump. Yeah, it would have been uh, something if one of those would upset uh, President Trump, but uh, they didn't. And in Bear County, the sheriff's race is a hotly contested race, but Javier Salazar pulls way ahead on the Democratic side with 54% of the vote. And on the uh, other side, I believe it was Jerry Rickoff who will be challenging him in the final election in November. And we mentioned uh, a couple of hiccups mm -hmm. in the counting system last night. It's what kept the Bear County Elections Office working late into the night or early into the morning, just the, getting those final numbers. Yeah, the final numbers in, as you were saying, just before three this morning. Sarah Costa's live at the Elections Office, so the numbers were relatively high, the high voter turnout. Good morning, Leslie and David. Yeah, this is one of the highest turnouts that Bear County has seen in a long time with over 250,000 county voters casting their ballots this primary election. However, it was the tallying of those numbers where something went wrong. Last night, the Bear County Elections Office says they had some software issues throughout the evening, which held up the posting of the cumulative voting numbers, which include election day voting numbers, early voting numbers and absentee voting. Bear County Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan says there were 280 vote centers located throughout the county, and because voters could cast their ballot at any center, it changed the dynamic of the voting process and reporting of results as well. The software company for the new system had representatives at the elections office all night trying to remedy the issues, but there was not an exact answer from them if exactly went wrong. But despite the issues, the Bear County Elections Office says they are very pleased with turnout. It was a great day. I mean, you know, we talked about that. It was a great day. And uh, the voters of San Antonio or Bear County should be proud. The elections office says they will hold a press conference at 11 a.m. this morning to brief and talk about exactly what was the holdup last night in the software issues. Live from the elections office, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Leslie and David. Thank you, Sarah. It was the most crowded Bear County ballot, the race to replace the indicted Michelle Berrientes Vela in Precinct 2 as Constable. As our Dylan Collier explained, 11 Democrats threw their hat into the ring. The long delay in counting ballots Tuesday night meant that only two things were certain in the race for Precinct 2 Constable. That the race was headed to a runoff and that one of the participants in that runoff would be Interim Constable Leticia Vasquez. Vasquez surged out to a nearly 20 point lead following early voting but with so many candidates spreading out votes that left her far short of the 50% plus one needed to avoid a runoff. Leading a large group for the second spot in the runoff election hours after the polls closed was retired Bear County Sheriff's Deputy Eno Badillo. We need to get integrity back into the office. We need to get the community, uh, the community to understand that we're still good guys and we want to do the work. My whole 25 years in law enforcement, it's about caring about the community. Uh, I do have a genuine heart. I guess it's just uh, the mother in me. Incredibly, 11 Democrats were on the ballot against only one Republican, Charlie Pena Jr. He awaits the winner of the May runoff in the November election. On the far northwest side, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. All right, so let's take a look at the final numbers for Precinct 2 as we put them up on your screen. You have 33% with Leticia Vasquez. Um, is that Eno, I think? Badillo? Eno Badillo. 13% came in second. A tense night for Democrats running for Senate District 19. Pete Flores, the Republican incumbent, was unopposed, and he'll head to the November election. The night was split between Zochil, Pina Rodriguez, and Roland Gutierrez. Patty Santos visited with both candidates. Sochi Peña Rodriguez, an attorney who has never run for office before, was leading the night. Her focus is on making health care affordable and accessible for those in District 19. Roland Gutierrez is a well-known name. He leaves his post as a member of the Texas House of Representatives for District 119 after more than a decade. Now, he says he has a proven track record of serving. We've done a lot of great big things in San Antonio. We're going to continue that work in Senate District 19, and we're not done fighting. We've got a long night to go, and this race is 
really, really close. And so we're real happy about where we are. And so we're moving forward. This campaign has been Abuela approved from the start and we are ready for November. We are ready to turn this seat blue and to be the first woman to represent this district. District 19 is the largest Senate district in Texas. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Patty Santos. You know, there's some campaigns staying up pretty late or early waiting on those final waiting numbers. Waiting on those final get, numbers. So. And this is just a taste because yeah. November, Ooh. can you imagine the voter turnout coming in in November? Wow. It's going to be an interesting your summer. You're talking about just about 10 minutes after 5, 67 degrees. Still ahead, more on what social media companies like Twitter are doing to combat the spread of the coronavirus. And a look outside with live cam. We do have those storms making their way into our area, which is going to make for a messy commute. This is actually live cam. Wow. You can't really see much. What are we looking at? We are looking at a very dark shot of live cam. <laughs> we'll be back. Welcome back. It's 13 minutes after 5 o'clock. Now to the latest on the coronavirus emergency. Health officials in North Carolina are contacting people who took a cross-country flight with a man who has tested positive for the virus. ABC's Mona Corsar Abdi has details. This morning, a deep cleaning underway on airplanes as health officials race to contact passengers who flew with one of the country's newest coronavirus patients. We are doing and starting that work now to trace folks' um, immediate contacts um, that they would have had, and that includes going back to making sure folks on, on that flight are made aware. North Carolina announcing the state's first case, a man who traveled from Washington State to the Raleigh-Durham airport. He visited the nursing home near Seattle, struggling with an outbreak of the virus. At least nine people have now died in Washington State, many from that facility. Families of the nursing home residents now demanding answers, including Vanessa Phelps, who says she hasn't been able to talk to her 90-year-old mother since Saturday. None of us can get through, and they, nobody's allowed in there, so we're just shut out. It's horrific. More than 200 people who work at or live in the facility are showing signs of the virus, and 12 local firefighters are now quarantined and showing flu-like symptoms. In Seattle, Amazon now says one of its employees is infected. Deep cleaning now underway at the office. In New York, Governor Cuomo is calling the spread inevitable after confirming a second case outside New York City, a lawyer who commutes through Grand Central Station. The World Health Organization says the virus may have a higher death rate than previously reported. 3.4 percent of known patients have died, compared to just 0.1 percent of flu patients. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. It is now 515 and 67 degrees. Coming up next, more election coverage. We're going to check out the results for District 23, the race that will replace Congressman Will Hurd, who is not seeking re-election to the U.S. House of Representatives. I saved hundreds on my car insurance when I switched to GEICO. This is how it made me feel. It was like that feeling when you go to high five a coworker and you do a perfect high five. Everyone is really excited for you because it was such a great high five. And then the bus comes in and she wants one too. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Whether you were born for more dance-offs, more travels, or more touchdowns, get the immune support that gives you more. Airborne's Crafted Blend has vitamins, minerals, and herbs. And No Gummy has more vitamin C. Airborne. Another cleaning tip from Mr. Clean. Struggling to clean tough bathroom messes with sprays? Then you gotta try Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. Just wet, squeeze, and erase tough messes around your bathtub and shower. Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. There's no clean like Mr. Clean. Welcome back. It is 518. Former District 23 Councilman Will Hurd not seeking re-election to the U.S. House of Representatives after what will be a six-year run. District 23 stretches from parts of Bear County and goes west along the Texas-Mexico border almost all the way to El Paso. Covering both the Republican and Democrat sides of the race are Courtney Friedman. 
Will Hurd vacated one of the largest congressional districts in the nation, and when he did, a lot of people stepped up to take his place. There are 14 candidates total, nine of them Republican, five of them Democrat. Um, we're here at one of the Republicans' uh, watch parties, which was late last evening. Um, his name is Tony Gonzalez, and this went off to a runoff. He's one of two people left in the race. Uh, Tony Gonzalez is a longtime veteran, has garnered attention for his many endorsements. He's received a nod from Will Hurd, and he's been endorsed by Texas Land Commissioner George Bush, Representative Dan Crenshaw, and several other former politicians. His career has been in cryptology. His competition, Raul Reyes, also came in with close numbers and will go to a runoff as well. Also a longtime veteran. He was a cyberspace officer in the Air Force and has held careers in both business and education. We asked both candidates what they're gearing up for in the runoff election. We've got a strategy for uh, win, lose, or draw, and so we're ready for anything. We double down and we work twice as hard to get over because everything is at stake. On the Democratic side, those are five candidates, but one ran away with the primary, Gina Ortiz Jones. You probably recognize that name. She ran against Will Hurd in 2018, lost by less than 1,000 votes. We spoke to her and here's what she has to say. The things I'm gonna do, fight to bring down the cost of prescription drugs, making sure that our rural areas in particular are not further and further left behind because they don't have the infrastructure or frankly just the medical staff for example, to work there. So she is now gearing up for yet another general election. For GMSA, Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And folks, taking a look at the map still, no accidents right now, but this is Transguide. This is Highway 90 at Medio Creek. So from Highway 90 Medio Creek all the way up to I-10, 604, that rain is definitely coming down. So all those connector ramps, those long turns and curves, you want to slow down well ahead of those areas today. 410 and Broadway up there by the airport, roadways are also damp. So remember, reduce that speed, increase that follow distance, and put away those distractions this morning. Justin? Thank you, Marcus. And there is the line of storms we've been talking about. It is uh, working its way towards San Antonio. Here's the main takeaway, though, right now. This line is weakening. So as I think it is, it makes it into San Antonio. We're just going to get some rain out of this, maybe uh, some gusty winds, especially if you're on the northwest side. But it looks like we'll just get a line of maybe some moderate to perhaps heavy rain at times. That may affect your morning commute, but it's going to move through pretty quickly. Uh, the one cluster that we're still watching up here, is likely producing quite a bit of lightning, some gusty winds, and that's in far northwestern Bear County and southern Kendall County, far eastern Bandera County. We still do have a severe thunderstorm warning that goes until 530 this morning. That does include northwestern portions of Bear County. Uh, we'll zoom a little bit closer to this storm that's just south of Fredericksburg, starting to move east. A good cluster of lightning with this. Just north of Sisterdale, that's going to move towards Johnson City and really away from us. That storm did have some gusty winds with it. And then uh, this is another area that we're watching. So Bernie, you're getting some very heavy rain right now. And as you go north out of San Antonio, Leon Springs up to Bernie, you're going to run into this uh, almost torrential rain, it looks like here, uh, with uh, quite a bit of electricity. There could be some small hail mixed in there. We haven't seen a whole lot of that this morning. And then some gusty winds, maybe up to about 45 miles per hour, perhaps a little bit stronger than that in spots. And then we'll go further south along this line, and it weakens quite a bit. This is the portion of the line that's likely going to move through most of San Antonio. So that's why we're not too concerned with severe weather as this gets a little bit closer to town. It was stronger as it was uh, coming out of Mexico and across our western counties, but just not the case now. And this extends all the way down towards Pearsall along I-35. This is our hail tracker, and again, hail is just not much of an issue this morning. There could be some small hail with that stronger storm we showed you just to the uh, south and west of Bernie. Uh, as far as the tracker goes with the strongest part of this storm, moving through Bernie here, well, basically as we speak, and then moving to, towards Bulverde, perhaps around a little after 6 o'clock this morning, Canyon Lake, 6.50 this morning, as it uh, progresses off to the east and northeast. Rainfall-wise, we've seen some pretty healthy rain in spots where you see some of these yellow colors. That's close to two inches there around Rock Springs. Probably some lower numbers as you get towards Lakey. Here in San Antonio, I don't think we're going to see numbers like that. Maybe, maybe a half an inch, but I'm thinking more of a quarter inch and less. Just looking at that line, it's not going to produce uh, just a lot of rain for us. Severe thunderstorm watch is still in effect. This goes until 8 a.m. this morning. It does include San Antonio, but once that line passes by, severe threat goes away. We still can get some showers though across our northern counties this afternoon, wrap around moisture here. Some of those could work their way as far south as San Antonio. So we'll keep a couple rain chances in there, some clouds as well, and temperatures probably on the cooler side, 73 degrees. 
you'll also notice the wind very breezy out of the north and west 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty 72 Thursday 72 Friday. We'll get some more clouds over the weekend. Maybe another rain chance on Monday. We'll be right back. In today's Tech Bites, Twitter advises its workers to stay home. Right, the company is strongly encouraging U.S. staff to work remotely amid coronavirus concerns. Twitter has already canceled non-essential employee travel, which led them to its pullout from the South by Southwest Film Festival. And Ford says it's going to begin making an all-electric version of its popular transit cargo van. Ford says it will be equipped with a mobile hotspot and other high-tech features. There's no word on the van's range or price. Ford expects to have them on the road next year. And replacing auto tires may soon be a thing of the past. Goodyear has developed a tire that never has a flat or just wears out. The tire regenerates itself, fixing holes and renewing its threads. Goodyear, however, isn't saying when it will be available. Hmm, not putting air in your tires? That'll do. I can do it. So was, check my have a great day. <laughs> It is 527 and 67 degrees right Still now. ahead in our next half hour, we continue our coverage of the aftermath of Super Tuesday. Who won, who lost, and problems with results coming out of Bear County. And good morning. It's the day after Super Tuesday. It is. The what day a day, what a night, what a morning. Yeah, glitch yeah. in the system with uh, Bear County elections, but it's all fixed now. We have yeah. all the results, and that's coming up. Usually all four of us are sitting together, but Marcus is over there tracking traffic with all the weather we've had. Yeah, we have some severe weather in our area, and that's why our Sarah Spivey came in to join Justin Horn to help us track all the weather. Hey, guys. Well, hey, good morning. Uh, we are currently tracking uh, some storms that are working their way through San Antonio well, near uh, the Alamo City. You can see this line of storms right now, really highly electrified, especially right on the Kendall Bear County line and up toward Blanco. You can see that orange box right there. That is a severe thunderstorm warning, which is in effect for the very northern portion of Bear County, uh, so around the Fair Oaks area and Kendall County as well, and the western section of Comal County, which does include Canyon Lake. This Severe thunderstorm warning is in effect for the next about uh, uh, 45 minutes until 615 and it's moving eastward and toward the Canyon Lake area. But right now the area that's really lit up on the radar is near Bernie, uh, just that northern section of Bear County and that southern section of Kendall County right there. That's where we have the potential for some pretty small hail, but also wind gusts of up to 60 miles per hour. That's what that severe thunderstorm storm warning is in effect for you can see as we turn on the current hail size it's not really showing too much maybe about half an inch size of hail so again that's pretty small on the smaller side it has to be about an inch in diameter to be considered quarter sized hail and that's right along that i-10 corridor before uh, between bernie and leon springs uh, as we turn on the velocity what we can see is that this storm also does have some pretty intense wind gusts between about bernie and leon springs right now uh, right at about 45 miles per hour. So it's definitely windy. It's definitely electrified, but it is sub severe at the moment. Uh, it is moving to the east and it could impact areas like a Bulverde Timberwood Park here just within uh, the next 30 minutes or so. In fact, it should be in Bulverde right at about uh, shortly before six and working its way out toward Canyon Lake by about 620. And uh, notice that the south end of this system is not severe. Just some good rain starting to enter into Bear County just west of 1604. Again, the main area of concern here is going to be the eastern half of Kendall County, the western half of Comal County, and the extreme northern section of Bear County. Our Justin Horn has been tracking these storms all morning long, and he's got to look ahead to what we can expect for the rest of the day. Justin. Hey there, Sarah. Yeah, we were hoping that, uh, at least I was hoping I'd get a little more rain out of this from my uh, my lawn, but it just doesn't look like here in San Antonio we're going to get uh, the heaviest of the rain, as Sarah pointed out, that line uh, weakening a little bit. Uh, we're going to try to show you some video here of some hail. Eh, it's not there, but that's okay. Uh, we did get some reports of some small hail coming out of Pipe Creek. We'll show you, try to show you that video here in just a little bit, but here's the forecast for today. So we get the line out of here, and on the back side of it, we're still going to get some showers, I think, about a 40% chance 9 o'clock, 30% chance noontime, and, and basically this is going to be San Antonio points to the north. You're also going to notice some breezy winds today out of the northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusting a little bit higher than that. So this is on the back side of the system. We'll continue to track that line, again, weakening a little bit, but we'll have more on that coming up here in just a few minutes. David, Leslie? 
Oh, actually, we're going to toss the traffic. Don't want to forget about that because it could be getting a little nasty out there, Marcus. And we already have a major accident coming in. So uh, right now, folks, as you take a look at the map, the map uh, for right now looks pretty good. However, things will be changing. You're going to start to see a line of red on the eastbound I-10 main lanes. Now we're starting to see just a little bit there right there as you're approaching Friel Street. That's going to be right before you get to that 35 north and south split. That's right where the upper and lower levels come back together and it looks like the two lower level lanes are blocked. So everyone coming inbound on I-10, you want to stick to the upper deck, that lower deck right now blocked due to that major accident. So that's just the first one for this morning. Expect other accidents to be coming in. Take a look. This is uh, a 281 at Isom Road. Looks like we have another one on those southbound main lanes of 281. And if we move over here, uh, Highway 98 Couples, you can see the water has fallen down, folks. That means the roads are slick. Give it some extra time. Both hands on the, on the wheel and reduce that speed this morning. David? Thank you, Marcus. If you're just joining us this morning, a look over some vote tallies. We've got them for you after there's a little glitch in the system last night. We finally got the final numbers in about 2.30 this morning. And there you can see one of the big races, one of the more intriguing races, was the race for Bear County Sheriff. Javier Salazar. 54% of the vote. His nearest competitor was Sharon Rodriguez with 18% of the vote. Now moving on uh, to embattled. Where are we going here, peeps? We're Precinct two constable. We're just going to go. No, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to uh, Sarah Costa. She's going to talk more about the problems that they had at the election office last night. Hi, Sarah. Good morning and good morning, David and Leslie. Yeah, exactly what went wrong last night is still not clear with those election uh, voting final numbers coming in late last night. The office working very late throughout the night coming in just before three o'clock this morning with an error in the software, the tabulation process. It was software issues that throughout the evening that held up the posting of the cumulative voting numbers, which include election day voting numbers, early voting numbers and absentee voting. Bear County Elections Office says there were 280 vote centers located throughout the county and because voters could cast their ballot at any center, it changed the dynamic of the voting process and reporting of results as well. The software company for the new system had representatives at the elections office all night trying to remedy the issues but there was not an exact answer from them exactly what went wrong. As for the total numbers, voter turnout was actually high, higher or the, one of the highest that the county has seen in a very long time, with the final number being 253,071 voters and early uh, and 122,159 of those being from early voting numbers. Later this morning, the Bear County Elections Office will hold a press conference to talk more in depth of went run, what went wrong and why those numbers were so delayed last night. Live from the Elections Office, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. David and Thank you very much, Sarah, but we do have the results now and we want to move now to District 119. Our Devin Clark has a look at that race. We are here at El Torero restaurant on South Presa. This is where Jennifer Ramos held her watch party last night. Early voting numbers showed that she was in the lead over opponent Elizabeth Campos, but only by 47 votes. Ramos, who got 44% of the early vote, says being brought up in public service and growing up in District 119, which extends from the south to the east to the northeast side, has made her passionate about the area. The slight lead in early voting numbers offering her big hope that she will be able to clinch the seat and make necessary changes. So some of the bigger problems is obviously our public education system. We want to make sure our teachers are getting paid the uh, respectful salary. We want to make sure our kids are getting the resources they need. We want to make sure that our public dollars are going to our public school education. Liz Campos, 2,635, a difference of 50 votes. So it would be a runoff right now, but still early. Trailing not far behind with 43% of the early vote, Elizabeth Campos, who also grew up in the area. She remained optimistic about winning the nomination, attributing confidence in her ability to do the job to experience working in Austin as a chief of staff. She says she also is hoping to make some big changes if she wins. The health care reform has, I mean, that's a, it's been broken for a long time, but I've had to overcome a lot of obstacles with my family, and I've been uh, able to help them. And I, the same way I fight for my family is the way I want to fight for the constituents. Sean Viasano, who came in third place with 675 
five early votes, did not have a watch party. His platform included education and cannabis reform, as well as helping the youth deal with social issues so that they don't go from school to prison. And the winner in this Democratic race will be going up against sole Republican candidate George Garza for the District 119 representative seat. Reporting on the South Side for GMSA, I'm Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. All right. Well, meanwhile, nationwide former Vice President Joe Biden had a super Tuesday indeed, and Senator Bernie Sanders wasn't too shabby either. AB, or CNN's John Lawrence reports both presidential hopefuls picked up a lot of pledge delegates. Joe Biden scores big on Super Tuesday. So I'm here to report we are very much alive. The former vice president is projected to win at least eight Super Tuesday states and says he'll strive to bring bipartisanship back to Washington. We can't have a never-ending war between the parties. We need a president who can fight, but may no, make no mistake about it, I can fight. But look, we need as badly, as badly someone who can heal. Senator Bernie Sanders also collected a healthy amount of delegates Tuesday and says he's not backing down to Biden. I tell you with absolute confidence, we are going to win the Democratic nomination or anyone else. And we are going to defeat the most dangerous president in the history of this country. Senator Elizabeth Warren's campaign is struggling. She even lost her home state of Massachusetts to Biden. Cast a vote from your heart. And vote for the person you think will make the best president of the United States of America. Former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg doesn't leave Super Tuesday empty-handed. He won American Samoa. In just three months, we've gone from 1% of the polls to being a contender for the Democratic nomination for president. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And right now at KSAT.com, we have all the recent numbers coming in from all across the area. You can look at every single race that we're covering on the Vote 2020 page at KSAT.com. We also have an election ticker running at the bottom of your screen this morning with those final numbers. I want to move on to some uh, new overnight news. A fight between two people leads to one of them being cut by a machete. This happened around 1120 last night in the 100 block of Ashland Drive, which is on the northeast side. San Antonio police say two men were roommates. They're in their 50s. They had an argument that led to one of them slashing the other across the hand. The victim was taken to the hospital with possible life threatening injuries. The suspect got away in a vehicle. At last check, police were still looking for him. It is now 541 and 67 degrees. We have more election coverage coming up plus. And this is the kind of dog you want to hang out with. This is Rex. He's a cool dude. We're going to introduce you to him coming up. And outside with live cam, the San Antonio is in there somewhere. Oh, that's I-10. Can't say anything. Yeah. Just shows. You wouldn't know it's I-10, yeah. but it's I-10. Not great weather this morning. No, not good. Justin Horn to get the forecast coming up. Rain's coming. And we're here with Alexis from the Humane Society, and you've got Rex with you. Yes, we do. We have Rex. He is actually a 12-year-old, if you can't believe it or not, 12-year-old Chihuahua. Um, but, you know, he still has a lot of life left in him, and he actually acts like a little puppy. He, he prances was, around. Yeah. He rolls around. He is the, you know, life of the party. I would have never have guessed he's 12 years old. He's looking really good. In mm -hmm. good shape, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, you guys got some stuff going on there at the Humane Society. Tell me about it. Yes, we do. So um, El Rey Fido is slowly approaching. Um, you know, we have until March 26 to, uh, you know, get all, all of our donations and all of our fundraising in. Mm -hmm. um, so if y'all are interested in uh, entering your pup to be Fiesta Royalty, uh, then if you can go to El send sahumane.org slash ERF to sign up your pup, post a cute photo, a cute bio, and start raising money for our shelter. And, you know, even if you don't have a pup, that's definitely fine. You can go online um, and donate to your favorite candidate. We have seven candidates so far for El Rey Fido. So, um, you know, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, and th this is a good program to help raise money for you guys, right? Definitely, yeah. definitely. And it goes to little puppies like this one, Rex. Like Rex. Looking good, my friend. Looking good. Uh, if you want to adopt Rex, he's available now, correct? Yes, available at noon today. Okay. Uh, there is the information for you. 4804 Fredericksburg Road. The number is 210-226-7461. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. So cute. Your time now is 546, and it is 67 degrees. Coming up next, we'll look at the results from the race for County Commissioner Precinct 3.
Welcome back, everybody. It's now 548. We continue our coverage following Super Tuesday and moving on to the race for County Commissioner Precinct 3. While Christine Hortick appears to have secured that Democratic nomination with 60 percent of the vote, Garrett Berger tells us the Republican race has been narrowed down but not decided yet. Democratic candidate Christine Hordick had a good night as early voting results put her clearly ahead of her two opponents. However, Republicans didn't have a clear winner. Republican Kevin Wolf has held the seat for the past three terms. With him stepping down, there was an eight candidate field of Republicans looking to replace him. While former probate judge Tom Rickoff and businesswoman Trish DeBerry both had solid leads over their other opponents, neither had enough to break the 50 percent of the votes they needed to win outright. So they'll be headed for a runoff election, both of them feeling confident. My Republican credentials can't be uh, questioned. And I've been in the courthouse all this time, so my experience in county government is unmatched. We have talked about the issues that are important to people in Precinct 3, property taxes, appraisal reform, transportation, all the things that are really important. A runoff primary election will be held on May 26th. For GMSA, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Moving on to morning headlines now, President Donald Trump is donating his quarterly salary to efforts to stop the growing coronavirus outbreak. The White House press secretary tweeted a picture of his check along with the announcement. The president is giving the $100,000 to, quote, support the efforts being undertaken to confront, contain, and combat hashtag coronavirus. The money will go to the Department of Health and Human Services. Six people have died from the virus in the United States, and there are at least 60 known cases nationwide. The Supreme Court set to hear arguments today in a Louisiana abortion case. It centers around a law firm that requires doctors performing abortions to obtain admitting privileges from a nearby hospital. The case is not a direct challenge of Roe v. Wade, the landmark case that legalized abortion, but it could be the first of a number of opportunities to chip away at abortion rights. It's also the first major abortion case to come before the Supreme Court since Justices Brett Kavanaugh and Neil Gorsuch took the bench. I just got an alert from Time Saver Traffic on my app. We have an accident. Ooh. We have a couple of accidents, and this one I'm uh, kind of adding this one on the fly, folks. So bear with me. Right now we're looking at another major accident. This one's going to be on the westbound lanes of Wurzbach Parkway right at Wetmore, and that uh, tends to be... Well, Wurzbach Parkway in itself, once it gets wet, uh, tends to be a little bit of an issue for us. Let's go to the other accidents that we are currently clearing right now. Here we go. If we go to the next one there, southbound 281 at Isom, we also have some problems there. And then take a look. This is inbound lanes of I-10 at Frio. Now the lower level is completely blocked due to this accident, so keep that in mind. Let's go over here. This is uh, I-10 at Frio. As you can see, all lanes are being, or all traffic uh, should be diverted up to that upper level, and that's just going to be inundated with traffic. There's not an easy way around this, folks. You will have to use your patience, reduce that speed, and increase that following distance. These, this is uh, 281 at Isom, as you you can see those southbound lanes. They have at least one of those right-hand lane, uh, right-hand lanes blocked as well as this shoulder. So it could make for a very long commute. Give it some extra time. Put away those distractions. Very, very slick conditions. General application at the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute. Justin. Marcus, thank you. Let's uh, get to the radar and show you where this line of storms is starting, uh, starting to move into uh, San Antonio now at this point. So we're talking to the west side here. If you're around Holotus, uh, the rain starting to move in some moderate to heavy rain with this. We've seen a few lightning strikes, although this is the weaker part of the line that is starting to move into San Antonio. Still, you're going to get some decent rain out of this. The stronger part is up here to the north, just now moving out of Kendall County, moving into Comal County towards Canyon Lake. Nice little cluster of lightning strikes there, and this is also going to put down some heavy rain. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. This is the warning that we have. So there is a severe thunderstorm warning that goes until 615. It includes basically extreme northern Bear County, Blanco, Comal, and Kendall counties as uh, this line moves east and northeast. We'll zoom in a little bit closer on this particular cell here. So just south of Candelia, right along 281. So north of Bull Verde, and uh, there's that the cluster of lightning strikes I was talking about. This is going to move right towards Canyon Lake. So if you're around the Canyon Lake area, expect some gusty winds, maybe some small hail and uh, some of this heavy rain. We could see winds up to 60 miles per hour with this storm, although so far we're really only looking at winds at about 45 miles per hour, but at least from what we've seen. And the winds are even lighter as you look at the southern extent of the line 
still uh, the rain's going to affect the morning commute as Marcus has been pointing out. It's going to cause some issues out there right now. The rain is starting to move in around Leon Valley. Uh, Alamo Ranch area, you're starting to get some of the heavy rain and this will spread across San Antonio here over the next hour or so. Our hail trackers turned on. The only area we're seeing is up here along 281 along Highway 46 there. Looks like we could see some very small hail with that uh, severe warned storm as it moves uh, towards Canyon Lake here within uh, probably the next five to ten minutes or so. Rainfall wise, some decent rainfall out there. We picked up close to two inches as you get out towards Edwards County. Most of us, though, we're talking half an inch, maybe up to an inch, and I, I don't think we're going to see that much here in town. I want to show you some video really quickly. This is coming out of Pipe Creek, and we are seeing uh, a little bit of hail there. This was earlier. This is the small hail, and that's probably what we would see around the Kingdom Lake area, pea size hail. Uh, at best, maybe a little bit larger in in localized spots. Future cash very quickly. These storms move away, but we'll still get some showers north of San Antonio through the day today. Some of those showers could work their way towards town this afternoon. We'll keep a 30 to 40 percent chance in there. Yeah, breezy and cooler too. highs only in the low 70s later this afternoon. Even though this line has passed by, have the umbrella with you just in case today. Any uh, if any of those showers do drop a little farther south, 72 tomorrow, 72 Friday. We'll get some more clouds by Sunday with another chance of rain on Monday. We'll be right back. And coming up in our next hour, we are tracking the rain as it heads into Bear County. Could very get could get very interesting in Comal County as well, up there around Canyon Lake. And we have all the results of last night's election Super Tuesday results coming up and a couple of accidents on the highways to tell you about. Officer Trujillo's got that for you coming up once again in the next half hour. We so. will find out. We we're definitely owed an explanation. Yeah. Absolutely. The Bear County Elections Office working late into the night after there was a glitch in the software majorly delaying the final voting numbers. Good morning. I'm Sarah Costa in just a bit. What went wrong? And taking a look outside with live cam. Boy, we've got storms in our area, but we've got Sarah Spivey and Justin Horn both here tracking them for you. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Wednesday, March 4th. And as you saw in that shot right there, can't see much in that shot right there. No, it's a busy, busy day in the weather department. But as I said, we have Sarah Spivey and Justin Horn both here tracking all the storms for you. What's the latest? Hey there, guys. Uh, the, that uh, storm system starting to move into San Antonio. So we're starting to see the, uh, the line here move into town. It is not severe, at least the part that's moving through San Antonio. So what we're going to deal with, some heavy rain, maybe some gusty winds. You're going to see a little bit of lightning out there. Could affect your morning commute. Uh, but again, moving in on the west side of San Antonio right now, the stronger part of the storm up here around Canyon Lake. That's where we do have a severe thunderstorm warning. That's going to go for about another 15 minutes or so. And this is the area that we're watching. So Blanco down in Canyon Lake and Bull Verde. Uh, that goes until 615. This storm and this line moving east at about 35 miles per hour. Good cluster of lightning right around Canyon Lake. There could be some small hail in there. We haven't had a whole lot of issues with hail. Can't rule it out, though. And you're going to get some gusty winds, too, uh, perhaps upwards of 40, 50, maybe 60 miles per hour, but we haven't seen a whole lot of that either, and that's great news. Uh, the strongest of the storm now moving in around Canyon Lake. Let's go down to San Antonio, Leon Valley. Some moderate to heavy rain right over you. Uh, Von Army, same story. So 410, it's reached 410, this line. It will be in downtown here shortly, and then sweep through the rest of San Antonio over the next 30 to 45 minutes. Keep in mind, the windshield wipers are going to go full force here when you get caught underneath this line. So the, the rain is pretty heavy. And again, there will be some lightning strikes associated with this. Uh, this storm that's moving through Canyon Lake, eventually working its way over towards Wimberley, San Marcos. That's going to be at about 7 o'clock this morning. So the, the line's moving at a pretty good rate. Okay, we want to go over to Sarah now. She's got the latest on the forecast. Sarah, what are we thinking for the rest of today? Yeah, Justin, so the good news is probably right at about 7 o'clock in the morning, that storm is going to be pushing west of San Antonio. We'll still have lingering chances for a few thunderstorms for those in western Bear County, but right before the heart of the morning commute, this system is going to be moving off to the west, which again is good news. Then as we head into the later part of the day, we're going to get very windy. Winds are going to switch around to the northwest, sustained at 20 miles per hour, gusting up to 30 miles 
miles per hour. We'll see mostly cloudy skies. And if you live north of Highway 90, you do have a chance for a continuing shower to about 30% during the afternoon. But all in all, the heart of the storms moving into Bear County right now should not be severe, but we could expect some heavy downpours throughout the rest of the morning. Justin will be back with a look at your forecast and an updated look at the radar. But for now, let's go ahead and toss it back to Officer Marcus Trujillo, who's got time saver traffic. Well, thank you, Sarah. And folks, we're getting another major accident coming in. This one is going to be a major accident. It's being reported over on the far, far west side. So we're going out to 1604 at Wiseman. That's where this accident is currently uh, we're, uh, we still have officers on the way out. This just uh, was just reported just a few minutes ago. So be advised, it could be a little while for those northbound main lanes before we get that cleared up. Once again, northbound main lanes of 1604 at Wiseman. So those folks that normally travel between Potranco northbound on 1604 towards uh, the Highway 151 uh, entrance, that is going to be a problem this morning. We still have this accident here, Wurzbach uh, Parkway at Wetmore. That's also in the clearance stages. That's going to be on the westbound lanes. Moving over to southbound 281 at Isom for another accident still in the clearance stages. That one's on the right-hand side. As you see, it is affecting the traffic flow. And then here in the downtown area, this is the big one, major accident, eastbound I-10 that has the lower level shut down. Right now, everyone is being forced off on the Colorado exit because both lanes of the lower level of I-10 currently closed before the upper and lower levels come back together. So there you can see we have a number of uh, officers out there as well as that flare, flare line. And there's where everyone has stopped on the eastbound main lanes of I-10 for those two lower lanes exiting Colorado to get around that accident. Here's the one up there by the airport, 21 at Isom. Folks, give it some extra time, reduce that speed, general application of the brake and the accelerator throughout your morning commute. David and Leslie. Thank you, sir. If you are just waking up this morning, we have some official numbers for you. If you went to bed last night and you didn't know the results because there was a glitch in the Bear County vote counting system and they didn't get those numbers in until about 2.30, 2.45 this morning. So we have some final results for you this morning now. And we'll get to details on the glitch in a minute. But Bernie Sanders won the Democratic primary for president in Bear County with 33% of the vote. However, Joe Biden won the state of Texas with 34% of the vote. No surprise on the Republican side, President Donald Trump won with 94 percent of the vote. Now, in the race for Bear County Sheriff, Javier Salazar took 54 percent of the vote in the Democratic primary. And Jared Rickoff won the Republican primary for sheriff with 52 percent of the vote. So that means there will not be a runoff. It'll just be between those two for Bear County Sheriff this fall. And we'll get to reactions from some of the prominent races in just a few minutes. But first, we do want to find out what went wrong overnight. A glitch in the software system, as we said, kept the Bear County Elections Office up late last night counting those final numbers. And we did finally get the results, as David said, around 3 o'clock this morning. Our Sarah Costa is live at the Elections Office. So how did the Elections Office work through these issues? Good morning, David and Leslie. Well, they had representatives from the software company at the elections office all night long trying to resolve those issues, which were eventually resolved. But exactly what went wrong and what that glitch was is still unclear. And it was those software issues that held up the posting of the final cumulative voting numbers, which include election day voting numbers, early voting numbers and absentee voting. Bear County Elections Office says there were 280 vote centers located throughout the county and because voters could cast their ballot at any center, it changed the dynamic of the voting process and reporting of results as well. And the new system worked as told, as promoted or as whatever. Um, it, the glitch was in the software, in the in the tabulation part, but we'll, we'll, we'll dig into that and find out what's wrong. As for those final voting numbers, there were they were the highest the county has seen in a very long time. 253,700 voters casted their ballots this election. Now, the election office says that they will have a press conference at 11 o'clock this morning to debrief and go over more in detail exactly went, what went wrong in the software. Live from the elections office, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. David and Leslie. Thank you very much, Sarah. Back to the race for sheriff. Voters in the Democratic primary overwhelmingly voting for Sheriff Salazar, helping him avoid a runoff election, allowing him to now put his full focus on winning in November. The sheriff has had a difficult first term leading BCSO, highlighted by numerous arrests of his deputies and jailers. 
escapes and mistaken releases of inmates and even inmate suicides, including one that just happened yesterday. Salazar says many of the issues he's faced are problems that have existed at the agency for decades, and he says he needs more time to make reforms. Part of the issue, as I see it at the sheriff's office, has been a little instability over the last several sheriffs. It's been a, a string of, stream of, of one-turn sheriffs, and so I'm hoping to stick around a little while. Some of the plans that I have, and they're great plans, are going to take some time to implement. Salazar will take on former Bear County clerk Jerry Rickoff, who the Republican primary, who won rather the Republican primary with 52% of the vote. Rickoff, who has no law enforcement experience, beat out Willie Neen, who has a wealth of experience. And the crowded race for Precinct 2 constable has been narrowed down from 11 Democratic candidates to just two. The current constable, Leticia Vasquez, led the way with more than 30% of the vote. In second place, hours after the polls closed, Eno Badillo, a retired Bear County Sheriff's deputy. Vasquez had this message for how people were vote. Whoever they think is going to do the best uh, work for the office, the community, and the, uh, the officers that are there. So there will be a runoff, and the winner of that May runoff takes on Republican Charlie Pena Jr. in November. This is not his first attempt at the Precinct 2 constable job. He ran as a Democrat back in 2016, but didn't make it past the primary. No other Republicans are in the primary. And moving on down to Precinct 3, a wide open race for county commissioner. It has been narrowed down. But the matchup for the November general election is still not certain. Republican Kevin Wolf's planned departure at the end of this third term left this race without an incumbent. Christine Hordick, who ran away with the Democratic nomination, thinks this is a chance for the Democrats to flip the seat. Well, it's definitely going to be tough, but the numbers are there. Democrats are there. Um, we've got a viable candidate in me this time around, and so we're hoping everybody will come out and we want, we'll flip the seat. Meanwhile, the eight-candidate Republican field will need a runoff primary to determine its nominee in May. Right now, Tom Rickoff and Trisha DeBerry are the two frontrunners who will compete for the nomination. At another key race we have been following, District 23 Congressman Will Hurd not seeking re-election to the House of Representatives after he will finish his six-year run. More than a dozen people are vying to fill his seat. The district stretches from parts of Bear, goes west along the Texas-Mexico border, almost all the way to El Paso. So let's take a look at how Texans are voting on this one. Again, these are the numbers statewide for the Republican ballot. Tony Gonzalez at 28 percent, Raul Reyes at 24 percent. They will go head to head in the runoff election in May. Raul Reyes spoke with us along with Tony Gonzalez, who has received an endorsement from her. So this morning, uh, my family and I, we left at 4 a.m. and we hit 11 counties today. And it was just a reminder of some of the issues that are that are uh, of concern in the district. At the top of that list is border security. It's on everybody's mind. You know, another issue is veteran affairs, you know, taking care of our veterans. I served 20 years in the military, served in Iraq, served in Afghanistan. So I think that resonates. For us, it's always been to secure the border. Uh, there's an open borders crowd that we've been fighting, and uh, it's time to secure the border. And of course, CD23 has got 29 counties, and some of them are some of the most impoverished places in the nation. So we're trying to get jobs back to the district. And on the Democratic side, a familiar face from the last election is back again for another shot at the District 23 seat. Gina Ortiz Jones lost out to Will Hurd in 2018 by less than 1,000 votes. So here's a look at the numbers so far on the Democratic side of the ballot across Texas. Ortiz Jones, 67%. Uh, she spoke with us about her win. We're very excited, very honored by the grassroots support all throughout this district. My entire team has worked hard to make the case for why I'm the best person to represent this district. We're not assuming anything away. It ain't over till it's over, right? So uh, we look forward, though, to making sure that this district is finally well represented. For all the official election numbers, you can head over to KSAT.com. Just click on our Vote 2020 page to see who won across the state and who won locally. 612 and 67 degrees. Metro Health has a hotline to answer your questions about the coronavirus in San Antonio. We'll have the latest on the outbreak after your commercial break. And once you get outside with live cam, see it's raining now. Raindrops all over the camera. Not exactly sure what we're looking at. Looks like some traffic's moving, but don't know where that is. Officer Trejo does. Well, that's the airport. Cool. All right. Those aren't planes taking out those cars. <laughs>
The San Antonio Metropolitan Health District has opened a coronavirus hotline for you to ask questions about the virus. It's open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. It comes after the CDC said that no person will be released from quarantine if they are pending test results. Yesterday, more than 120 evacuees on Joint Base San Antonio were released from quarantine and taken to the airport after showing no symptoms. A lot of rain in the area that adds up to several accidents in the area. It is a busy morning for Marcus. Now some of the accidents have cleared. So southbound 21 at Isom and also eastbound I-10 there at uh, Frio. That has cleared out of the way and it looks like we have another one popping up here. So here folks, this is what we have right now. We're looking at southbound main lanes of 410. Right there is your exiting for southbound 35. That's on the southwest side. That's an accident right there. We have another one here of 4, 1604 on those northbound lanes right there at Wiseman Boulevard. That's causing a little bit of a delay. And then take a look at this one here, Wurzbach Parkway. Expect Wurzbach Parkway just to be slick throughout this morning commute. You probably want to stay away from there if at all possible. Uh, westbound lanes right there at Wetmore. We have a vehicle facing the wrong direction. You will need to reduce that speed, increase that following distance, and general application of the brake and the accelerator, not to mention that steering wheel. You don't want to be jerking that wheel this morning. And uh, take a look, that's 410 at Perrin Vital as we uh, see another uh, two vehicles there. Now this one is blocking the two left-hand lanes, so that's going to slow folks down on those westbound main lanes headed back over towards that uh, 410 281 area. And as you'd see, 410 Exchange Parkway, just look at all that spray being kicked up. Folks, get ready for a long commute, right, Justin? Yeah, Mark, so rain's coming down pretty good. I guess the one redeeming factor is that this line will probably be through by the time the heart of the commute is underway, but those roads are still going to be wet. We're still going to have puddles out there. And here is the line of storms we've been watching all morning long. Nothing severe at this moment. We lost all the warnings, so it's good news there, but it's still putting down some good rain. We've still got a lot of lightning strikes with this, too. It's pretty electrical. Could be a little bit loud as this moves through. Uh, the strongest of the line has been up here across parts of Comal County, now moving into Hayes County. Still seeing some very heavy rain around Canyon Lake. You could pick up a quick inch where some, are, some of this heavier rain is, where you see some of these reds and oranges. And that's going to be north of Canyon Lake, and that's going to spread towards I-35. So places like New Braunfels, you're just about to get some of this heavy rain. It'll be here momentarily. Let's move down to San Antonio. And the line was well, sort of skinny, but it does pack a punch. Moving through uh, downtown now, see a couple lightning strikes here and there. And we're seeing some pockets of heavier rain, especially up there around the airport. Uh, we'll zoom in a little bit closer here to the uh, southwest side of town. Moving through Lackland, it's just past Lackland at this point, but along Highway 90 as it gets towards downtown. That's where some of the heavy rain is. And then back down towards Palo Alto College there. Up across the northern half of San Antonio, it's uh, crossing over 281. Moving through the airport, there's that pocket of heavy rain that I was mentioning. That's going to move over towards Live Oak. Selma shirts, you're going to get in on the heavy rain here momentarily as well as this line is moving east at about 35 miles per hour. So pretty good clip. And that's why we're not too worried about flooding. Yes, the rain's going to come down heavy, but it's not going to accumulate to a whole lot. Here are the uh, rainfall estimates as the radar sees it. And we have, have had some good numbers as you get out west, places like uh, Edwards County, uh, where you're seeing that yellow color there probably close to about two, maybe three inches in some cases, but that's the high end. I think here in San Antonio, we're talking about a quarter of an inch at best as this line moves through, probably less than that. Uh, here's the bigger picture, and this is a, uh, a rather uh, big storm system because we've got rain stretching from Dallas all the way back to the Permian Basin, and that rain's going to stick around. So if you have uh, plans to travel north today, it's going to be raining across North Texas, and we're still going to see some showers, I think, across the hill country this afternoon too. The severe weather is going to spread east. We've got a new tornado watch box that extends from Louisiana through Mississippi and Alabama. So a lot of issues today, not only here, but across the southeastern portion of the country. Rain coming down at the airport, 64 degrees. Westerly winds now at about 15 miles per hour. That's the other side of the forecast. On the back side of this system, we're going to see some very gusty winds this afternoon out at the northwest. Could gust all the way up to 30 miles per hour. Temperatures right now in the 60s, some rain cooled air out there. Uh, and I think we probably won't warm all that much today in San Antonio into the north. It stays fairly cool to the south. We'll see some warmer temperatures later today. So here's what the future cast shows. The storms are pretty much out of here by 10 o'clock. But notice to our north, we're still seeing activity. Some of these showers could drop as far south as San Antonio this, this afternoon. So we'll leave a chance in the forecast. Uh, and then by tonight, all of this moves away. We get clearing skies and a lot more sun as we go into tomorrow. Forecast for today, up around 73 uh, rain chances uh, in there. Again, through 
of the afternoon and winds out of the northwest at 10 to 20 and gust, gusty. 72 tomorrow, 72 Friday. And then look for some more clouds as we get into the weekend. Uh, another chance of rain shows up on Monday. We'll be right back. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. That's a difference you can feel. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. Welcome back at 625. It came down to the final seconds, but the Spurs pulled away with a win last night. She said with a smile on her face. Mm -hmm. The Silver and Black beat the Charlotte Hornets 104-103 in North Carolina. You can see a Hornet player drive to the basket with eight seconds left, but he turns the ball over and the Spurs were able to run out the clock. What's big about this? Tim Duncan's first full game as head coach. Fill it in for Coach Pop, who was out for personal reasons. So way to go, Tim. Spurs will have a couple of nights off, but will stay out on the East Coast. They play the Brooklyn Nets Friday night. Hopefully, LaMarcus Aldridge will be back for that one. Tip-off for that game is scheduled for 6.30 our time. Go, Spurs, go. There you go. Your time now, 6.26, 64 degrees outside. It's so much more pleasant when they win I know. game with you. Take a live look at the roads. You Brad too. <laughs> We've had several wrecks this morning. A lot of water on the roads. Marcus will have an update for us coming up. And welcome back at 629. And look at that rain all over San Antonio. A little south of San Antonio, a lot north of San Antonio. Traffic's a mess. Oh boy, everything is happening this morning. Uh, my app just keeps going off saying yeah. another accident, another accident, another and, accident. And in just a few minutes, it's going to go off again. Uh -oh. Uh oh. We have a rollover accident. Oh, no. Frio at Veracruz. That's yeah. here just outside the downtown area, but Frio Street between I 10 and 35. Uh, also very, very busy during the morning commute. And I yeah. think we can blame Mother Nature. I think we can. Yeah, the, the storms, we were hoping they'd, they'd be through by the time rush hour hit. hit we're not quite there because the, the line's still holding on here around San Antonio. We, we got about two tenths of an inch so far at the airport. We'll likely pick up a little bit more as this line is progressing east. It's a thin line. We don't have any severe weather. So there's the good news there. But I could just hear some thunder outside. We've got some heavy rain coming down here at the station and around downtown. So here's the line. Stretches along I-35 essentially here until you get to San Antonio. And then it goes straight south towards Pleasanton. Let's zoom in on some of these stronger areas here. This was an area that had a warning earlier. It does not have a warning now. So we're just talking about some heavy rain. San Marcos down in New Braunfels Canyon Lake. A lot of lightning strikes with this. Pretty electrical. We saw some gustier winds earlier. Looks like those winds have subsided quite a bit. So really the, the main issue with this now is just going to be some brief heavy rain and some lightning strikes. That's the case here in San Antonio too. Now it is almost through downtown. So we're starting to see this affect the eastern side of San Antonio. Places like Converse, Live Oak. And as you get out towards uh, the east side along uh, 410, starting to see the rain come down there. And then also along 281 uh, down to the south. Let's do, zoom in on the Live Oak Garden Ridge area. That's uh, where the heavy rain is coming down at this hour along I-35, which is always a mess this time of morning. This is just going to compound the issue. And then uh, you see some of the heavier rain there, 37 and 410. Heavy rain starting to move in. And uh, farther south, Pleasanton, Poteet, you saw a little bit of rain. It's now east of you, but Pleasanton, you're seeing the rain right now. And this will affect Elmendorf shortly. Here's what I think the forecast looks like today. We'll get the showers and storms, of course, this morning. But once this line passes by, then we'll just have a slight chance for some showers. And this is mainly going to be San Antonio 
to the north. If you're south of town, you'll see quite a bit more sun today. If you're north of town, a little better chance of rain and some clouds. Temperatures today up around 73 for a high. And then the other big story is going to be the gusty winds. Northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour, gusting to 30 miles per hour. So a breezy day. It does get better tomorrow. We'll talk more about that forecast in just a bit. But I know Marcus is a very busy man this morning. Marcus, what's the latest? Well, the good news is that some of the uh, earlier accidents that we had earlier this morning, those have cleared out of the way. The bad news is uh, we are getting two and three to replace those accidents from earlier this morning. Still clearing this accident down the southwest side. We're looking at the southbound lanes of 410 right there as you're trying to exit for southbound 35. And those cloverleaf ramps, folks, that's where you want to slow down well ahead of those areas. You want to slow down before you get to the turn, not as you're trying to negotiate those turns with these slick conditions. Northbound main lanes of 604 at Wiseman right there at the intersection. We have another major accident currently in the clearing stages and then Wurzbach Parkway. Uh, we did have a vehicle facing the wrong way on the westbound lanes of West Park Parkway, Wurzbach Parkway right there at Wetmore. And now we have another accident, major accident there, Wetmore at Broadway right there at the intersection. That's going to be just south of Wurzbach Parkway. So keep that in mind if you normally run parallel to the airport there. We're going to go just off the highway here. Friel. Friel runs, uh, Friel Street runs parallel with 35 just here in the downtown area or just outside the downtown area. And right there at the intersection of Friel Street and Veracruz, we have a rollover accident. So that's going to tie up traffic and back things up, especially for people trying to make their way to Municipal Court and also to UTSA downtown. You're going to see a lot of traffic backed up right there. And then this one here, Parambital at 410. These are the westbound lanes. You see three vehicles there. <clears throat> Officers are out with that accident. One of those three vehicles sitting side sideways blocking uh, one of the lanes. We have two lanes of westbound 410 headed from 35 back over towards the 281 intersection of uh, 410 281 interchange uh, closed right now. Lots of spray, lots of water on the roadways. Remember, reduce that speed, increase that follow distance. You want to leave early. Take your patience with you. Could be a very long commute today. David and Leslie. Thank you, sir. It was a record turnout in Bexar County with more than 253,000 people voting in the primary election. But as we've been reporting, the Bexar County Elections Office had some problems recording votes when the polls closed last night. So here are some of the big races where we have the official results. Bernie Sanders won the Democratic primary for president in Bexar County with 33% of the vote, but Joe Biden won the state of Texas with 34% of the vote. No surprise on the Republican side, President Donald Trump won convincingly with 94% of the vote. In the race for Bear County Sheriff, Javier Salazar took 54% for the Democratic primary. Meanwhile, Gerard Rickoff won the Republican primary for sheriff with 52% of the vote. There will not be a runoff election in that race. And as we said, it was a long night for the Bear County Elections Office. The final number is not coming in until right before 3 o'clock this morning. All of this because of a glitch in the software system. Sarah Costa is live at the Elections Office with exactly what happened. Sarah? Good morning, uh, David and Leslie. And that's exactly what they're trying to figure out, what went wrong with the software. You know, getting those numbers that late at th right before 3 in the morning is definitely not normal, especially with the polls closing at 7 o'clock last night. But after a couple of hours last night, the Bear County Elections Office says they have finally got those results. And after they had some software issues throughout the evening, which held up the posting of the cumulative voting numbers, which include election day voting numbers, early voting numbers and absentee voting. The Bear County Elections Office says there were 280 vote centers located throughout the county. And because voters could cast their ballot at any center, it changed the dynamic of the voting process and reporting of results as well. The software company for the new system had representatives at the elections office all night trying to remedy the issues, but there is not an exact answer from them exactly what went wrong. If they have, they have not shared. No, we're, we're not <laughs> we will find out. We we're definitely owed an explanation. Yeah. Absolutely. She went on to say that she is very pleased with voter turnout, calling an extraordinary. The final numbers were at 122,159 was their early voting numbers. And the total numbers were 253,071 votes cast. Now the elections office says they're going to be looking into exactly what went wrong to fix those issues for the upcoming May election. They'll be hosting a press conference at 11 a.m. this morning to debrief the media exactly more in detail of what went wrong in that glitch in that software system. Live from the elections office, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. David and Leslie.
Thank you, Sarah. So we should have the results of that press conference for you on KSA 12 News at noon mm-hmm. today. All right, now back to the race for Bear County Sheriff. Voters in the Democratic primary decisively voted for Sheriff Javier Salazar. Tim Gerber is following that story and has reaction from both the Democratic and Republican primaries for Sheriff. Despite all the problems he's faced in his first term as sheriff, Democratic voters in this primary overwhelmingly giving their votes to Sheriff Javier Salazar, helping him avoid a runoff and now allowing him to focus all of his efforts on winning in November. Salazar addressing his supporters last night. The sheriff has had a difficult first term leading BCSO, highlighted by numerous arrests of his deputies and jailers, escapes and mistaken releases of inmates and inmate suicides, including the one that happened yesterday. Salazar says many of the issues he's faced are problems that have existed at the agency for decades. He says he needs more time to make more reforms. Part of the issue, as I see it at the sheriff's office, has been a little instability over the last several sheriffs. It's been a, a string of, stream of, of one-turn sheriffs, and so I'm I'm hoping to stick around a little while. Some of the plans that I have, and they're great plans, are going to take some time to implement. Over on the Republican side, it looks like Jerry Rickoff, the former longtime Bear County clerk, will be the man to beat for Salazar in November. Despite having no experience in law enforcement, he is the leader on the Republican side. He didn't even have a watch party last night. We caught up to him at home, and this is what he had to say. I represent a change in thinking. I plan on developing unique programs to address these issues by using science and technology to observe, measure, and test, and look for observable points that need continuous improvement. And that's where we'll focus to solve the problems at the jail and in how we police the public here in Bear County. Should Rickoff not be able to hold on to that lead and slip below 50%, he would be in a runoff then most likely with former chief criminal investigator for the district attorney's office, Willie Ng. He has a ton of law enforcement experience and he's running as a reformer, hoping to fix the problems at BCSO. Now we did everything that we could, everything. My whole team, we we worked really hard. We got out in the community. We did everything. We did the digital, we did the mail, we did the the, uh, phone banking, we did uh, text messaging. We did everything. So I'm very proud of the team and when, uh, win or lose, we did a great, we did a lot of great work. With the Sheriff Salazar campaign, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. And once again, we have all the final votes in, and we now know that uh, Rickoff did win that race. And as we said before, Bernie Sanders won Bear County in the Democratic race for president. While Joe Biden took the state of Texas, he did so with 34 percent of the vote, shocking Bernie Sanders, who is expected to win the state heading into Super Tuesday. It was part of a wave of victories for the former vice president from coast to coast. ABC's Inez de la Quetera has more on how the Democratic race for president is turning into a two-man competition. Overnight, Joe Biden making a remarkable comeback. They don't call Super Tuesday for nothing. With some states still too close to call, the former vice president sweeping the South, winning at least nine states on Super Tuesday. I think um, Joe has the track record of unification among, across the aisle. And I think that's really key right now. After a series of early losses, Biden getting a last-minute surge from his landslide victory in South Carolina and from Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, who endorsed him after they dropped out. We're told, well, when he got to Super Tuesday, it'd be over. Well, it may be over for the other guy. But it's still far from over for that other guy. Bernie Sanders went into this as the front runner and racked up big numbers in California, Colorado, Utah, and Vermont. Voters came out in droves, some in Texas waiting more than three hours to vote, Utah breaking records, and in Virginia, turnout was almost double what it was in 2016. Super Tuesday was also the first time Mike Bloomberg was on the ballot, and while he did get his first delegates, the former mayor failed to win any states. And the same goes for Elizabeth Warren. Both are now facing calls to drop out. I know we can do it, and you know who else knows it? Donald Trump. Bloomberg and Warren are both looking past Super Tuesday. They spent the night campaigning in states that will be holding some of the next big voting contests in a week. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. And for all of the official election numbers, just head on over to ksat.com. Click on the Vote 2020 page to see who won across the state and locally. It is now 641 and 64 degrees.
If you're trying to spark your kids' interest, there are some techniques to help. After the break, we're going to see how awe-inspiring activities can foster learning. And another live look outside with live cam. Sun's coming up, but it's not going to be very bright because it's so cloudy right now because of all that rain that has passed through. Those roads are wet. Remember that if you're just heading out this morning. One study found that when preschoolers experience awe, it might be unlocking a way to help them learn. Researchers observed kids as they watched one of three videos featuring nature. One was an awe video, a video featuring mountains, forests, and jungles. The second was a happy video of animals doing funny things. The third was a calm video showing small animals doing normal things in nature. Then the kids were given a novel toy to play with. Experts found the kids in the awe group had more exploratory behavior when playing with a novel toy. And this suggests when children are awestruck, they may develop a stronger interest in the world around them and be more willing to seek out new information. Parents can create awe-inspiring moments with science experiments, museum trips, and exploring nature. Now, while the study uses rigorous methods and builds on prior research, experts are doing another study to confirm the results. Let's check on the roadways once again. Very busy morning. Yes, it is. And uh, check your phone, Leslie. You have another push alert coming out just right now. This one's uh, going to be uh, 604 at Gold Canyon. Now, although it was reported as originally as being eastbound, if you take a look at the map, uh, the westbound lanes are actually slowing down. So this could affect both the eastbound and the westbound main lanes of 604. So keep that in mind. Let's uh, go to some other ones that we have right now. This is 410 at 35 down the southeast side, still clearing that major accident. And next we have this one here, 604 at Wiseman, still in the clearing stages. Over uh, Wurzbach Parkway, uh, westbound lanes, right over Wetmore, and then another one, a major accident down below, Wetmore at Broadway. Those are two separate accidents occurring about 30 minutes apart. Uh, here in the downtown area, we have a rollover vehicle, Frio at Veracruz, and then take a look. This is 35 at O'Connor, very heavy traffic on those southbound main lanes, another accident there off to the side. And everywhere we look, folks, uh, this is 35 at South Cross. This is another one just coming in. Northbound main lanes are 35 right before South Cross. And this one, we have vehicles on both sides of the highway. So only two lanes of northbound 35 down there on the south side available at this time. There's 410 Imperial and Vital as we have additional emergency vehicles there causing additional delays for those westbound main lanes of 410 headed from the 35 and 410 interchange over towards the 281 410 interchange. As you can see, very slow going for a lot of folks. Justin, any relief in sight for the motorists this morning? Well, Marcus, that line's going to go ahead and move through San Antonio, so we're going to see an end to the heavy rain, but uh, those transguide shots show you that there's still a lot of water on the road, so it's still going to be probably a tough uh, commute. We are also getting word of a storm report. This is going to be up around uh, FM 1863 and Smithson Valley Road reports of power lines down there. We did get some gustier winds north of Bear County up there around Kamau County, so not a surprise uh, with the, the storms that are now moving east, but that is the one storm report we've gotten in so far. Also, we're seeing that we've got about a half an inch of rain in San Antonio. We'll take it. That's uh, good news. Uh, we've had some bigger amounts out across uh, the hill country, but here in town with the uh, line that moved through and as thin as it is, we didn't get just a, a ton of rain, which is good news. We don't want the flooding. Uh, Doppler radar showing that uh, the line extends from San Marcos, New Braunfels, east of San Antonio down to Pleasanton this morning. So let's zoom in on some of these uh, areas where we're seeing the heavier rain right now over New Braunfels. So in town there, uh, the rain is coming down. We've got some lightning strikes too, so this is a little electrical. And then uh, farther south uh, on the east side along 1604, just outside of Converse now. And uh, this line also extends down towards Elmendorf. So the heavy rain lining up right there along the east side of 1604. A little closer look here, I-10-1604 interchange. That's uh, where we're seeing some heavy rain right now. And this is going to move its way towards Seguin here over the next hour. Calaveras Lake, you're just seeing the heavy rain ending there. And a little bigger view, we've still got a few showers out to the west. So places like Sabinal, Hondo, you're still going to see a few showers here. And what we've done is we've taken a 3D slice of this line of storms. And I, I want to show you this because these storms aren't terribly tall. We're talking about 20,000 feet here. If that typically we see these storms, if they're going to be severe, build a lot uh, taller into the atmosphere. So that's why we're not too concerned about severe weather at this point. Uh, this is just rain, just some lightning and some beneficial rain at that 64 degrees.
at the airport. Dew point is at 61. We've got westerly winds at about 12 miles per hour. Temperatures in the 60s for the most part. Some 50s up there around Comfort and Kerrville 59 right now in Comfort. And still some cloudy skies there. Uh, there is going to be some cooler air working in from the north today. We're also going to see some very gusty winds out of the northwest. 10 to 20 miles per hour gusting higher than that. Maybe up to 30 miles per hour. And the forecast takes this line, moves it out of here. But notice what happens, say, midday. We start to get some showers back up across the Edwards Plateau and Hill Country. A few of these showers could work as far south as San Antonio. But the best chance is going to be north of town. And clouds will still hang around a little bit, too. So that should keep temperatures on the cool side and then we'll get clearing tonight forecast high around 73 we'll keep rain chances in there breezy if not windy today and then clearing out tomorrow and friday low 70s both days a little bit more cloud cover over the weekend especially on sunday we may get a few more showers and storms by monday we'll be right back The final voting numbers delayed in Bear County for several hours last night. Good morning. I'm Sarah Costa. This all due to a glitch in the software system. Exactly what went wrong is still not clear. The elections office just saying at this point it was an error in the tabulation process in the software. Software issues throughout the night held up the posting of the cumulative voting numbers, which include election day voting numbers, early voting numbers and absentee voting. The software company for the new system had representatives at the elections office all night trying to remedy the issues, but there was not an exact answer from them exactly what went wrong. As for the total numbers, they were actually very high. One of the highest Bear County has seen in a very long time, with the final number being 253,071 voters casting their ballots this primary election. From the Bear County Elections Office, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Hey, coming up today on GMSA at 9, San Antonio growing and changing right before our eyes. Seems like you can't turn a corner without seeing construction. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. One of the areas filled with cranes is the Broadway Corridor. Max Massey gives us an inside tour of the new first of its kind building there that hopes to set the area up for future success. That's today at 9 after Good Morning America. That means more people are headed downtown. And we have a number of accidents still in the clearing stages. We're going up to 1604 at Gold Canyon. That's slowing folks down in both directions as the uh, vehicles are in that center lane right now. Moving down to the southwest side, 410 at 35. Still clearing that accident. Also have this one here, Wurzbach Parkway at Wetmore and then Wetmore at Broadway. Another major accident this morning. Rollover accident still clearing Frio at Veracruz. And then take a look. We have accidents here. 35 at O'Connor. That's going to be on those southbound main lanes of 35. 410 at Perimbital. The two left-hand lanes of westbound 410 blocked by that accident. Then 37 and South Cross. Both the entrance ramp to northbound 37 and the bridge over 37 at South Cross. And then northbound 35 also at South Cross. Justin. Thanks, sir. Let's take one last look at the radar. That line moving east of San Antonio now, but it is moving towards New Braunfels and Seguin, so you're getting some heavy rain there. A uh, few lightning strikes still, but all in all, this line is weakening. Looks like we are done with that line of storms for now. Now, we still could see a few wraparound showers through the day today. We'll keep a slight chance in there. It will also be windy. Northwesterly winds, 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty, and uh, we'll see some nice weather tomorrow and Friday. Stay safe out there, everybody. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here for Good Morning San Antonio at 9. Good Morning America is next.